Alright, you're up on both. Good. Would this be a good choice as a survival rifle? The Ruger American I'm talking. Well if you have some interest in that question or if you just want to know whether the Ruger American would be a good Ruger perhaps even great low cost bolt action hunting rifle then dude you've come to the right place. Welcome to the detailed feature length nothing fancy tabletop review on the Ruger American. First and admission of sorts. This gun was way low on my reviewing priority list. That's right, so low in fact it probably would have never been reviewed here in the Nut and Fancy project by me. Just shooting straight dudes. Really, it wasn't. Couple of reasons for that. One is I thought and I still I still feel there's some great information out on the American rifle already. Amer I, American Rifleman, a lot of Americans there. American Rifleman from the NRA did a review. Excellent, love those guys. And so did a lot of other publications. So that's one reason. And two, I wasn't super stoked on it. There, I said it. I really wasn't. I mean, it's another Me Too rifle from Ruger. I'm going to talk more about that here in a second. I also had my eye on the Marlin X7, the Savage Axis, which by the way is right here on the table, also in the TMP inventory. Yep, I plan on doing a review on this very quickly. So when the American com comes out in 2011, finally available in 2012 in numbers, I was like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. <laughs> I was, I was like, totally not stoked to do the review. What changed that? You guys changed that. That's right, I read your comments. 
subscribers to the Nut and Fancy Project for months since January 2012 keep asking, when are you going to review the American Rifle? Please review the American Rifle. We just got several hundred more as I posted the Remington 700 re review last week. So, yeah, I read your comments. I appreciate them. Thanks for watching. You guys rock. You are my friends. And I will do everything in my power when the planets align to do these reviews. Here we go. Getting underway. Couple ground rules. First and foremost, uh, if you just found this video, you're interested in the Ruger American rifle, you're go and you're going, who's this nut and fancy guy? What's this all about? Maybe you're a hunter and you heretofore have not known anything about the Nut and Fancy Project. I, first, I'll say welcome. I'll answer pretty much most of your questions on this gun during this review. It is not, however, a pop culture review. I'm not going to go out and blow up watermelons and tow the party line on the gun. No. What you get is a very honest and fresh data point. And that's all it is, a data point on the American rifle. And that's what you're going to get. If the video is too long, break it up in parts. Put it on your smartphone. Everybody has time through the day. You can find time. Come on now. It's free of charge too. What's better than that? Here we go. So that's that's one of the ground rules. I'll break ranks here and there with, with, uh, with what other people, even respected voices, have said about the American rifle. You're going to get some fresh opinions like on the survival rifle concept. I have not seen that discussed. I discuss it pretty much a lot when it's appropriate for the gun. You'll hear about that. We're going to jump into POU here in a second. And then I got to address this. I kind of mentioned it already. I got to give heat to Ruger for, yes, another Me Too gun. Okay, I pretty much respect innovators, not imitators. And if we're going to be honest, then yes, the Ruger American Rifle is an imitator. Big time. I mean, if we were just to look at the Savage Axis, which of course preceded the Ruger American, they almost look identical. So much so that I kept the freaking stickers on the American so I could keep track what was what. The stock is profiled almost exactly the same, textured almost exactly the same, 22 inch barrel, same contour. The receivers definitely do with those milled flats. Polymer triggers, removable magazines. There are some key differences. I will go over those. But this gun came before the American. So did the Marlin X7. Okay, so Ruger saw that these guns were doing well. These were very innovative, con con uh, I should say, conceptual rifles. That they came out, Savage and Marlin said, Hey, for around $300, let's give hunters a gun that will perform in excellent fashion, accurate, lightweight, durable, and we're going to just change the technology we we have to put those guns together so we can lower our costs. Voila, here comes the X7, the Axis, and then, late to the party, the Ruger American. Which, by the way, is a complicated name, the Ruger American. Why don't we call it the Patriotic Banshee <laughs> while we're at it? It doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. The Ruger American, I was at the range shooting today, dude's like, what rifle is that? I was like, it's a Ruger American. He's like, what? I said, Ruger American, what? He finally understood what I was saying. It's complicated. What they should have called this rifle is the Ruger Allied. Yeah, get it? World War II reference, Axis powers, Allied powers. Okay, so there you go. I give some criticism, criticism to Ruger, rightfully so. I will stick to it that they kind of copied another design. Yes, there are some changes. We'll go over that. In doing so, I will also give them credit. They made some improvements. They did that also with the Walther P-22, right? Yeah, that is, uh, not P-22, yeah, but the SR-22P. See, I still get it confused. They copied in form factor, more or less, the Walther P-22. They came out with a better pistol. So there's good and bad there. I'm just laying it out on the table. That's what you get when you click on the video. Let's rock. On to philosophy of use. And let's jump right into that question. Is it a good survival rifle? I will say a good survival rifle is one you have with you when you need it, if it's reliable and if it's accurate. So to answer that question, I need to ask how you define a survival rifle. That is very important. If it's something you're going to stash in a kit that that is a bug out kit that you may take with you and it's all man portable, then I would say absolutely not. 
not a good choice. But nothing fancy, the gun is very lightweight. It's six pounds, four ounces naked, I know. How about that ammo? Is that lightweight? Currently available in 243, 270, 30 out 6, and 308. This chambering. Tested. No, it's not lightweight. I'd much more prefer a 22 semi automatic rifle like the outstanding Marlin Papoose. Maybe the breakdown Ruger 1022, but that's even heavier than the Papoose. You're very SAWC limited in that philosophy of use of, I should say, that definition of survival rifle. Okay, now if you're talking about a gun you're going to stash in a location, maybe it's your cabin. So you're not really going to make it a, you know, an extended man portable system, then I would say absolutely. It's a great choice as a survival rifle. Um, you know, maybe you'd stash it up with 100 rounds or so in a cabin. Uh, it would excel at that. As far as its capabilities, those are not questioned here in this review. They are proven. This is a straight shooting, reliable, tough, lightweight gun. We're talking about whether you're going to have it when you really need it in that survival philosophy of use. So I'll just leave it at that for now, for just time's sakes. Uh, and I'll roll into this philosophy of use, which I've never mentioned before with another gun, and I will say an Alaskan rifle. That's a cool philosophy of use. What do you mean, nothing fancy? I'm talking, and hunters, if you're still with us, you might be. This will interest you. This is a great hunting rifle. One that you can just thrash on and not have to worry about dinging it up. The wood's not going to warp and change point of impact. It's a beater. And that's what I think of when I think of an Alaskan bolt action rifle. You go up there to the guides that are guiding up in Alaska, you'll see a lot of stainless rifles, you'll see a lot of polymer stocks, and these are user guns. They're tools that these dudes are getting out and using every day. Some are gun people, some aren't. There's, it's just a tool they use to get the job done. They need something reliable, they need something lightweight, and a, and a lot of people call these mountain rifles. This is a good Alaskan rifle, the Ruger American. A great one, actually, especially for the money. Wait till you see how it shot. I mean, it's amazing. Here's a couple things, POU-wise, it's not. A bench rest shooter. When we talk about accuracy, I want you to have a realistic expectation of accuracy for what is basically a $300 gun. Now, don't get me wrong, it shot well. But don't think it's bench rest in its philosophy of use. I think you'll see discussions about, well, my Ruger American shot this group and that group. I'm like, dude, if you're that worried about groups, you need to upgrade. You need to go with a, a heavy barreled high value shooter like a Remington 700, a Savage Model 10, and then get serious, work up your hand loads. Then it's a bench rest gun. I, I don't really think it's this gun's calling to be a bench rest shooter. Maybe a recreational shooter, perhaps, you're hand loading but even in that philosophy of use I would say probably not lightweight full caliber guns center fire guns like this are not generally that fun to shoot they're high recoiling for a lot of people they won't like it you'd be better off with a heavier bolt action gun one weighing eight plus nine plus pounds those are much more enjoyable to shoot so recreationally I would say no and then as philosophy philosophies of use go it's not a bragging rifle it's not a gun that you're going to show your buddies and go, oh, dude, awesome. Unless he knows about value. Then that's an intelligent person, I might add. And they'll go, oh, cool, man, that's a lot of gun for the money. In that sense, I guess it is. But there's really no pride of ownership with a Ruger American. It's kind of going back to Alaskan POU. A tool, a tool of use. And that's all I'm going to say about philosophy of use. That takes us to innovation and design, materials, quality, all that crap I usually talk about. I'm going to probably draw some comparison and contrast with the Savage Axis sitting in the background there. I'm going to start off, I guess, with the barrel. Non-threaded, recessed crowned, hammer forged, 1 in 10 twist, Ruger barrel, button rifled. Sporter weight contour, which is really, for the philosophy of use we're talking about, ideal. Not for extended firing. When I talked about those heavy barreled Remingtons, those in my book are for extended firing and they will experience some point of impact shifts, but it's going to be minimized. Not so much with a sport or weight barrel. You start cracking off a bunch of rounds with this, you're going to get variances in where the bullet's ending up. It's not really designed for that. It's designed for one, two, maybe three shots if you really suck as a hunter. 
and then you're good. That's what this gun is all about. Now, notice I, in philosophies of use, you TMPers, I didn't really mention WROL, right? Without rule of law, end of world, end of days, whatever you want to call it, rifle. I don't think this is a really great choice. You know, it's limited in firepower, it's bolt action. Yeah, it's, it's not a maximum precision rifle. And I think you can make a case there is a bolt action rifle, I don't know, that might fit into a system like that. Not really suited for that. I'd much rather have an AR-15, a good quality AR-15 myself. But it could function in that. Heck, we said Mose and Nagants could function in that, didn't we? And by the way, when we talk about POUs, I want to go back a little bit. In a lot of ways, this is a better choice than a Mosin. And yes, I said it in the Mosin review. I said, hey, if you're going to upgrade your Mosin, think very carefully about your value equation. How much money are you going to put into it to make it the kind of rifle you really want? Maybe it's a trigger modification. Maybe it's a sight modification, a scope base. Next thing you know, you spent $500 on a Mosin Nagant. You would have been a lot better off getting a Ruger American. For that matter, a Savage Axis or a Marlin X7. These are modern, smooth, actuating bolt-action rifles that are lighter weight and actually more accurate. Keep that in mind. But we do say the Mosins can defend the cabin, right? Same with this. Same with that. So back to the barrel. You can see how thick it is there. And it kind of adopts that Savage way of attaching it to the receiver screw mount, collar I guess is the right ter terminology. There's your receiver, milled flats. I actually like those a lot. They're good looking and I think it makes the receiver more rigid. I could be wrong. I'm often wrong. One thing that is uh, maybe not so great on this enclosed, encased receiver, which by the way copies the Savage. The Savage has the same thing, but the opening on the Ruger American is smaller. Let me grab that axis and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Here's the axis. These are both in 308 caliber. You can see that's bigger. I did not experience any jams. We did not experience any jams during testing phase of the Ruger American, or for that matter, the Savage Axis. But if you did, getting inside there on the enclosed receiver might present somewhat of a problem. There's a gas relief hole on the axis. And you can see it's pretty much in the same location on the Ruger American as well. So stiff receiver, there's your bolt release. I like that. It's flush mounted. It seems really tough. I just had one fail on a Weatherby Vanguard while shooting it. Yeah, the bolt came completely out while I was racking around. Wow. Yeah, that's what I said. There's your tang mounted safety. Hallelujah. Can I get a hallelujah? I gotta tell you guys, I'm not super stoked on the M77. You may have detected that last year when I posted my M77 Hawkeye review. One of the things I said is I don't like a bolt mounted safety, a la Mauser. I don't. I like it either where Rivington has it right here, or where Savage, and in this case, Ruger has it right there. Nice and positive. Kind of jumping into ergonomics here. Kind of a hump there so you won't miss it. Materials and quality. I love that bolt. Love that bolt. See how it's kind of skinny, so it's not really fat, so it doesn't add a lot of weight, but it's somewhat extended on the American. Drops down further, and then it has a 70 degree rise on it, easily clearing your scope. Yeah, I got to show you guys this. This is funny. This is funny. Where's that Savage Axis? All right, so I mount this sucker up, right? I'm like, yeah, I want to really put that sucker close to the bore like this. You can see how close it is. It's right there, buddy. Oh, oh yeah. Cool Nothing special on the rings. These are like, I think, Leopold Rifleman rings, aluminum, just for a temporary mount. They're fine. And lo and behold, I get this on here, and I'm not clearing the bell. <laughs> There's rubbing right here. But we were already out in the desert shooting. I was like, dude, we're running it that way. <laughs> sure enough, we ran it. Look at that scoring. Nothing fancy. Why don't you remount it? It's time, bro. It's time, a lot of time. You're talking hours wasted. I would have taken all the way back. As it was, it did not affect shooting at all. Manipulation of the bolt, yes, it affected. We just worked around it. I think the throw and the bolt is better than the Savage Axis. The Ruger American, there you go. I said it. Materials and quality. Let's look at the bolt while we're here. Take this out. And there we go. Look at that thing. That is a fat, 
bolt shroud is actually what they're calling that. Three massive cat cam lugs. Nice extractor there too. See that? It's not a stamped steel extractor as far as I can tell. Tell. Spring ejector plunger right there. Really smooth, the bolt manipulation in the Ruger American. Now, I think Mike Pfeiffer was saying he went with a enlarged bolt shroud so there's less wobble. Don't know if I really buy that. It has the same wobble as any other gun. I, when you extract this all the way to the rear, you can still wiggle it around. The important thing to me is lockup. From everything I can gather, it has very tight lockup, and then it's smooth and sure. It gives me sure extraction and ejection. I did find that to be the case with the Ruger American. Actually, a lot better than some other bolt guns I've ran. That's a back shroud there. There's a way you can take that apart. It's in the manual of your Ruger American if you ever wanted to do it. I don't think you should. Great job on the bolt handle again. And that'll take us actually to the underside of the gun. To the magazine. It is a flush mount four round magazine in current calibers. And it is a Ruger design and I like it a lot. Had no malfunctions with it at all. You can top load it. Although during our testing phase, I think we just took it out and loaded it by hand every time. One thing I like over the Savage magazine on the Ruger is this. The Savage is made of metal, comparison and contrast as promised. I don't like that retention tab as much. See there's no spring there, it's just a piece of plastic which over time will that fatigue. When I'm up in the mountains, the next thing I know my magazine falls out of the gun. On the Ruger it's actually spring loaded. You can actually see the spring right there. I prefer this one. Smooth feeding, no jams, didn't see any issues at all. I like a detachable mag option. Not that you need it in a hunting philosophy of use. Again, if you do, you really suck. But in survival philosophy of use, you might. And it's just a quick way to reload. If you end up running a gun in with your Ruger American, I think that would be fun. So much faster to load with these. So I haven't seen a lot of these around yet. They will. They will be popping out there. That's the magazine. It is actually pretty much a win for the Ruger American. And that will take us to the stock. I already told you guys it's pretty much a copy of the Savage Axis. It is pretty much plastic stock. And a lot of people are raving about these molded in hand grips or whatever striations. I think they suck. They don't do anything. Anytime you get a real narrow taper foreign, foreign like that, I just have a hard time hanging on to it sometimes. You may see that occasionally when I'm shooting a gun like that. The hand grip will pop out of my hand. Now, that's probably because I'm shooting off shooting sticks, which, Mr. Hunter, you probably will be doing too. We'll talk about that in accuracy. I don't find they provide any level of meaning, meaningful traction, I should say. And if you look at it again, we're talking about the Me Too. It's basically the Savage Axis, dude. Same. No raised cheek piece on either rifle. It's almost like they, they just basically copied this rifle completely on the stock. It's okay, though. To get, don't get me wrong. I like the stock, but I would add traction material to it. Maybe some A-grip synthetic suede right here. Oh, that would be awesome. Right up here on the foregrip, nice. Now I can really hang on to it, especially if I have some blood or sweat going on. Yeah, this is a free floated barrel though. Good job, Mr. Mike Pfeiffer, Mark Gurney. Good job, man. So you put your dollar bill here and you're not gonna have it touch anywhere along the length. This is a very rare commodity in a value rifle, a bolt action rifle. I'm talking free floating. I don't see it that much. Does it make a huge difference on how the gun shoots? I would say, I've said this before, probably not. Okay, I wanna repeat that, probably not. A lot of guys will make a huge deal about free floating. I will take it if I can get it. There's no penalty for it, right? But it doesn't ensure perfect accuracy. I'm just saying, it doesn't. There's gonna be two interesting things right here in the stock. What do they call them here in the catalog? Oh yeah, power bedding integral bedding blocks made of stainless steel. I might roll a photo in too. It does not have a conventional recoil lug, the Ruger American. Instead it has those V blocks. There are machined recesses in the bottom of the receiver that will lock into those V blocks. And then you have these two big Allen head screws which will 
screw into the bottom of the receiver and sink it down into those V-blocks, thus ensuring a free float and ensuring consistency. It's a great design, a great design. And in that, there is innovation. Well, more or less. I think the X7, honestly, the Marlin X7 kind of uses the same thing. Where is that Marlin catalog? Dude, seriously, I'm gonna show you this real quick. There it is. Oh wait, that's not it. That's my 1996 Marlin catalog. Collectible. Love it. Here it is. So if we go into the Marlin catalog, there's the X7 series right there. You know, and this, by the way, is probably a good time to tell you, I just don't tow the party line of the manufacturer, dude. I think that's why people come to an fancy review. I just don't give a crap. You know, Ruger's happy with my review. They're not happy with my review. I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's you guys. It's me. I'm just true. So, you know, here I am in a Ruger review and I roll out a Marlin catalog. Does Ruger like that? Probably not. Don't care. How's that? Pillar bedding. There you go. So that's in the X7. Ruger guys go, hey, man, we need that too. They did it. They did it well too. I can't lie. They did it well. Okay, on the top of the receiver, I won't get into great deal. And actually, I'm going to mention some stuff. You'll have included rings on the Ruger American. Those are actually, I think, Weaver number 46, and they're the same, surprisingly, as Savage Model 10 rings. That's right. The spacing right here, I found out, is different, but you can put two-piece Savage Model 10 or 110 rings on, number 46s, and they will fit, including the curvature of the receiver. That's what I found out. Pretty cool. Good job, Ruger. I'm glad we don't have proprietary rings on that sucker. I am so glad. But nothing fancy. I, I thought you loved the Mini 14. I love the Mini 14. I don't like the ring attachment system on it. Just so limiting and having to be forced with a, the steel rings. On I go. On and on. That takes us to the trigger. I'm going to start off with a, the Savage trigger, actually. This is the same price point rifle. And it does not feature their Accu trigger to save cost on the Savage Axis. It's a decent trigger, pulls relatively cleanly at about five pounds out of box, the Savage. You get a better trigger on the Ruger American. There, Ruger, you happy with that? Said it, you do. It is adjustable. You're gonna have to take it out of the stock. You're gonna take those two big Allen screws out and then you'll see a screw on the front portion of your trigger unit and you will turn that clockwise to increase trigger pull and counterclockwise to decrease it all the way down to three pounds and that's where mine's pulling right now three pounds that looks like an accu trigger doesn't it it's not it's just a bladed it's a safety blade in the middle middle of the trigger on the ruger axis and i'll tell you what i'm glad dudes <laughs> i am so glad don't get me wrong, I love the Savage Axis trigger, but one thing I don't like about it is what I call SFL. Another nut and fancy acronym, by the way, heads up. Side Force Lockup. On a Savage Axis, I'm sorry, Savage Accu Trigger, if it's cock safety's off and you push on the side of the trigger, it gets bumped, it will lock up and you have to recock the rifle. You don't have to worry about that with the Ruger American. It does not have that problem. I love the trigger on the Ruger American. It's a lot of trigger for the money. A lot of trigger. Did it make a huge different difference in accuracy? Um, not so much. There you go. Between the Savage Axis, I wouldn't say it's so much. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. By the way, this is a very thin wrist on the stock. I don't mind it. I wouldn't mind it just a little bit thicker. That's a quibble, and that takes us to the recoil pad, which, by the way, is wearing electrical tape right now. Yeah, that's because it's grasping on clothes. That's a real grippy rubber. It's kind of like the soft cell pad. I call it soft cell. It's like super cell pad on uh, the Remingtons. Very effective. Not that 308 is that punishing, but if you're shooting it like me, I don't know, 100 rounds at a time, yeah, no joke, without cool down, then you'll kind of know it. So great pad, like it. And then you have the included swivel studs right here. Nice medallion on the bottom of the pistol grip. Integral trigger guard. I have no problems with that at all. It's cost saving and it's tough. That Zytel, like I said for years, is very tough. I don't need a steel trigger guard. That's pretty much it. Innovation in design materials and quality on the Ruger American. It is pretty much all good. And keep in mind, hammer forged barrel. 
ergonomics I think I covered most of that stuff too right and that'll take us to firepower quick discussion four rounds questions four rounds in a realistic PLU that's going to be plenty especially if you're a hunter four rounds they might come out with extended magazines I kind of doubt it would I like to see an extended mag for I don't know all these high value bolt action rifles Savage Axis Marlin X7 Ruger yeah I totally would just for recreation for me running gunning steel shooting I think it'd just be cool I like it it's fun there are you know, 10 round magazines, 10 round conversions with Accuracy International have been popular forever, albeit with this lightweight sporter contour barrel that would be different. Maybe what uh, they should come out with is a tactical American. Call it the patriotic banshee. <laughs> there you go. On to, I guess, Accuracy. Oh, this is going to be fun. Realistic expectations of accuracy with your Ruger American. What's realistic? Well, here you go. Maybe that's realistic. This gun did not like heavy rounds. <clears throat> that's Winchester 180 grain PowerPoint. One, two, three. Horrible group. That was today at the range. Sorry, got to get a drink. Yeah, horrible. Now, that's this round right here, by the way. Yep. To be fair, no bolt action gun I've shot that in yet has liked it. It's not a very consistent round at all. Next up, ooh, Remington, core locked, 150 grain pointed soft point. That's a realistic, actually in my book, a, an above realistic expectation of accuracy out of the Ruger American. Hey, that's not an inch group. No, it isn't. In fact, I could not get one MOA out of this gun in extended target shooting. I have read that some people could. I'm like, I don't know how you did that, dude. I'm a good shooter. I have a good trigger pull. I have good breathing. My rests are pretty solid. I shot it out in the desert, didn't get one MOA. I was like, I got to do it again at the range. I did. This is off concrete today. I felt good about all, most of these trigger pulls, not all. Couldn't get one MOA. Federal XM762, man, that's a good round. I was so stoked when I saw these two printing. I was hoping the third would hit right here. Nope, it flew it. And that, with all these lightweight barreled polymer bolt action rifles, a lot of guys will comment on that, that you're going to get one flyer. This is a realistic expectation of accuracy. This is what you can expect, and I think it's excellent. Fusion 150 soft point. Dude, what happened to you? That sucks. That's this round right here. Not happy at all with that. I'll tell you around I am happy with though, and you're gonna see this again on more paper. It's a Hornady Custom. That's a good hunt round right there, dudes. 150 grain, boat tail soft point. It's not a clover leaf. Maybe I just suck. It's probably just me, right? How about wolf? I think it's interesting. I, I shoot pretty much calibers and types of bullets. A lot of other dudes don't, especially the magazines. Uh, because I think it's representative of the philosophy of you. Survival rifle, well, do you really want to go out and spend, where's that real expensive box? Well, just like this, you want to go get $21 a box, that's a good price on those. Sometimes it'll be up to 30. You want to go buy five boxes of those and put those in your storage? It's a lot of money. No, generally what you're going to have on hand is this stuff. Wolf. Maybe it's steel cased, 150 grain FMJs. And there you go, that's about a three inch group. Not great. This, by the way, was in the desert yesterday. PMC, eh, about a 2.4 inch group, horizontally spread. There's that federal premium, 150 grain, soft point. That's a good round. It's shot really good out of most of the, of the guns I've shot it out of. There you go, right there. Buy it, highly recommended as a hunting round. You might need something bigger, depending on what, like elk, I wouldn't do 150s on elk. I'd probably shoot something a little bit heavier. It's a one in 10 twist on this barrel, by the way. So I was a little bit disappointed how it threw those 180s. Very disappointed, actually. Ultra Max Match 168 grain boat tail hollow point. Well, that group looks pretty much like the rest, don't it? Yep. When it's fed really, really good ammo, this example, that's as good as it would shoot. Will it get better with break in? I don't know. That is Honey Shack A Max 168 grain A Max right there. This is yesterday. Look at that group of wolf. Shut up. That's shooting about as good as anything else. Oh, I love it when a gun will throw just regular FMJs well. There's, that's actually XM80, not 7.62, which 
I found is not shooting as good. Wolf Sider. One more target. Actually, a couple more. This is Savage Axis. Okay, that gun in the back that I've been showing you, dudes. I'm going to show you real quick. XM762. That's a great group, Savage. Hornady Custom. About the same. Fusion. Shot the Fusion a lot better. Remington Core Locked. Shot it about the same. Savage Axis. So what do I take away from it? Well, one more thing I want to show you real quick. Oh, there's a Vanguard. XM762 out of a Weatherby Vanguard. 2009. My crappy hand loads are shooting. And then one more. Remington, and I'm showing you this to bring you back to reality. This is 700 SPS. XM762. These two guns shot this round about the same. I would classify, if you want a bottom line, here it is. I would classify the accuracy on the American rifle as excellent to outstanding for what it is. Remember the thickness of that barrel. Remember the carry weight, six pounds, four ounces, and then with a scope, it's going to be seven pounds, seven ounces. And you're getting basic, I'm going to call it a one and a half inch gun with really good ammo. You shoot not so good ammo, I'm going to call it a two to three inch gun. I just showed you the paper to prove it. There you go. You get really good ammo, you practice, find out what it, it likes. Bye. Then you'll get a one, maybe, maybe. If you're really lucky, an inch group, more likely you're going to get probably 1.25, 1.5 inches. I told you about the American Rifleman Review. I think they're calling it 1.25 inch Hit. group. Keep in mind, for $300, $350 rifle, for money. Yards. One other thing before I leave accuracy, and this is very important. You guys got to know this. How much does a gun weigh? Sorry, miss. Well, seven Close pounds, right. seven ounces, then, fancy. You are correct. You will not, I repeat, not achieve that accuracy unless you really lock the gun down. And these lightweight bolt action guns are exceedingly difficult to lock down. When you're up on the mountain like we were and you're shooting them off sticks, off a tripod, you'll really realize they kind of all over the place. You gotta lock down the back, you gotta lock down the front. You don't have weight helping you out, so you gotta have some good technique on how you're gonna do that. We were shooting at 450 yards, as you've been seeing, on steel. And that is a challenging shot for this little rifle, for me at least. In the wind, if you jerk your trigger even a little bit, you're going to miss. If you wiggle the gun even a little bit, you're going to miss. Yep. you got to lock it down. One way you can do that is with a bipod. It is a plastic stock, and all the things we've said about plastic stocks can come into play. How that barrel's nice and free-floated, you put a bipod on it, and then you start impact in that barrel. I don't know. Maybe you get worse accuracy out of it. You got to lock it down though. Shooting sticks, tripod against a tree. You ain't going to do that standing unless you're just magical. That's accuracy. It's excellent. Field strip dudes, I already showed you. Piece of cake. Just take the bolt out with a bolt release lever right there. Clean it like we've talked about before. You don't need a lot of lubrication on that. It's a polished bolt. Very smooth. Look how smooth that bolt is. That is how you do a bolt. Oh my gosh, it's so smooth and fast. Yeah, a lot better than some other stuff we've seen then. That's that's field strip. Clean it from the breech end, the muzzle end. I really don't care. Sometimes I'll clean it from the muzzle end. I'm just careful not to wear that rifling. Not a big deal. Accessories. Well, I talked about the scope bases. They are savage scope bases. Standard sling stuff. By the way, I didn't introduce the scope, and there's a reason. I'm glad I thought of this uh, or remembered it. There's a reason this is wearing this glass. It's kind of out of league with a rifle. That's a very expensive, cool coloration Leopold 2.5 to 10 with M2 dials. The reason I put it on there is I knew out in the desert we were going to do some long range shooting with a Ruger American and you're going to run out of elevation with a 1 inch tube because those are flat bases it comes with. Two ways you could solve that, you could get those 20 MOA bases from Night Force. Those are catalog number, if I wrote it down, I did, A166, they're outstanding and they are expensive, around 90 bucks for two piece bases, 20 MOA taper. There's not a lot out there that fits Savage, or in this case, at least this point in time, Ruger American, that may change. That would be a highly recommended accessory. At least as a survival rifle. Hunters, 
you need to decide how far out you're going to shoot. If you're going to shoot out to 450, uh, first I'd recommend against it because I don't think you're that good. No offense. Seriously. You should take it a closer shot where you're, you're going to have more knockdown power, your round, whether it's just 308, the 30 out 6, and whatever Ruger introduces in in the future. If it's 300, then a 450 shot, no problem. But a 308, I don't know. Totally doable if you're practiced. If you're not, uh, you might just wound the animal and never find them. So I'd be careful on that. But decide how far out you're going to shoot. If you are, you might have to go with a 30 millimeter scope like I did with this. And that gets to why. This is just the one I had in the inventory. This one was off another gun. I was like, ah, I need a 30 mil scope. I went out laser bore sighting, ran out of elevation, blah, blah, blah. The Leopold's on it. And it gave me plenty of elevation on the dials all the way out to 700 plus. Those, again, are just B-square aluminum rings. They're nothing special. I probably would upgrade them if I were to you know, keep this setup going. Other accessories, ah, that's about it. It's not threaded. You know, for you tactical dudes, would that be something you'd like? I don't know. I always like threaded muzzles. Put a flash suppressor on. Put a regular suppressor on if I want. Do I like dangling off a sporter weight barrel that's heated up? No. Savage makes a an Axis that has a threaded muzzle on it, though. Pretty sick. By the way, I real there's a couple other things in accuracy that I want to tell you. One is I did not break in the barrel. I got no time for that, guys. I don't. I can't spend a lot of time cleaning the barrels and I'm not sold on whether it makes that big of a difference anyhow so the this accuracy shots you're seeing is cleaned at once before I shot it and then bam 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 didn't let it cool bam 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 didn't let it cool there you go that's how I have to run it here I just don't have time otherwise accessories I don't know what else to tell you on that I wouldn't change anything with the trigger stock if you don't like to stock get a different gun track record and I would guess, uh, I guess I should say reliability and durability. I'm going to go piece by piece. The so stock reliability, durability will be excellent. Scratch it up, mar it, you won't care. It'll just look cooler. On the extractor, ejector, I think it'll be excellent from what I've seen. Same with a bolt. I don't see any problems here. The magazine, over time, may be an issue. I just don't know. It's too new of a design, and there's no replacement for passage of time when we have something like this. It was easy to load. It seems like it's good, but who knows? Okay, on the barrel, I think it'll be just fine. I don't think you're going to put that many rounds through it anyhow. Hammer forged, not chrome lined, of course, button rifled. How many rounds are you going to put through your Ruger American? Probably not so much. I already mentioned the bolt retention lever right here. It's tough. I see nothing glaring when it comes to reliability and durability. There really is no track record. It's too new. The Patriotic Banshee, uh, I mean um, the Ruger American Rifle, it's too new. That's just going to have to take time. You guys will help us establish that. Keep an eye on these comments on this nothing fancy video and you're going to see a lot of guys weigh in with their experience on the Ruger American. They can probably provide some information that I did not see in my testing. Uh, might be good, might be bad, but it's a clearinghouse of information. If it's someone who subscribes to the project, you go to their channel page, you can pretty much trust it. Um, no egos involved in my review, dudes. None at all. I'm a medium skill shooter. I think you will be able to ring out of your Ruger American about the same accuracy I did. Maybe a little bit better. But today, especially at the range, I had it really, really locked down. Felt very confident on my presses, and I was getting about an inch and a half still, even with really high quality information, uh, ammunition, I'm trying to say. That's kind of what you can expect. But keep in mind the price. 300 a little bit more wow that is great value uh, maybe people will ask me hey between the rifles a savage axis ruger american marlin x7 which one would you prefer i don't think you can go wrong with all three rifles i really don't they're all outstanding in the philosophies of use i've, I've mentioned maybe some some that i've forgotten they're excellent. I, for probably, I just got to keep it real, probably the trigger, the magazine design, and the bolt design, I would probably prefer the Ruger American. I do like the enlarged ejection port on the Savage. There are models of Savage that have a threaded barrel, extra value, and also included scope and bases. That's a lot of value. It's a great gun, albeit kind of a Me Too gun, again, from Ruger. 
but it is a win and it is a ton of value for the money. That's a nothing fancy review. See ya. That's a hit, dead center. I was aiming the very bottom of the plate too. Were you? Yep. Hit. Banging. That went high again. Dang. Take out some MOA, dial it down to uh, yeah, that direction. Nope, nope. Go back. Two clicks that way. Now try it. Shooting wolf. 450 yards Ruger American rifle backup camera tactical doodle that's fancy very cool location it Hit. They can hear it, you don't have to call it. All right.